Hi guys and welcome to this video on percentages. Ah uh, yes, I'm Darren Mathguru and it's really good to have you here watching. Um, if you haven't already done so, can you do me a favour? I have a bit of a YouTube channel that uh, would be great if you would subscribe to. Never going to be rich and certainly never going to be famous, but uh, it will give me the opportunity just to know you're watching, which means the world to me. And there's mathguru.com where you can download notes and watch these videos all linked to a particular textbook. So uh, head over there, it's absolutely free to sign up. What are we going to do today? We are going to look at percentages, converting between fractions and decimals percentages, and the other way around, finding a percentage of a quantity and know how to use fractions to pair, compare two quantities. This particular series of videos for the general maths course is here just to build the foundational stuff to make sure you can use it in the later videos that to come. All the other topics are really, really funky in the general maths course, um, but they require you to be able to know about bid mass, directed numbers, powers and roots, know how to round to decimal places, significant figures and why we take approximations. And my last video that I have literally just recorded is about conversion of units because being able to convert between meters to centimeters and time and seconds and that type of stuff is really, really important as well. But <clears throat> why oh, why do we use percentages? What is a percentage? Well, you get 20% uh, on an exam and I'm sure you will probably not want to ask your parents for anything for Christmas. And I certainly don't think you're gonna get anything. But the point of it is, the percentages allow us to compare stuff. It's, as I say here, for example, if I got a score of 45 out of 68, and we know that that would be written as, he says, writing a six, a 45 out of 68 on a test, you would want to know what that is a percentage. Why? Well, it's a very good question. Because maybe uh, someone else got a score, let's say you got a score of 35 out of 60 on a different test. And we were trying to use these two as a, a decider on who was the most intelligent. At the moment, we can't tell. One test is out of 68, one test is out of 60. If they were both out of the same thing, then we would make some sort of comparison. And that's really what percent means. A percentage basically turns each of these test scores out of 100 using some funky maths. And by turning it out of 100 and making the denominator the same and using this percent sign thing, then we can compare, which is why we tend to, as teachers, give you percentages. So you can compare, you know where your grade is, and all that type of stuff. Not always the best thing to have, uh, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's a percentage, it's out of 100. But that's what this video is gonna look at. Why use percentages? So let's look at the following. Fractions turning into percentages is relatively easy for some of the questions, harder for others, but we can use our calculator. So if we look at the idea of 10 out of 20, and I want to turn that into a number out of 100, then basically I'm looking at equivalent fractions, and that's stuff you've done in previous years. Did you just shudder because of the word fraction? Ooh, how do we get from 20 to 100? I times by five. And we know that with fractions, what I do to the top and the bottom must be the same. So that now gives me 50 out of 100. And we've come up with this convention that we don't need to write the word out of 100, or we don't need to write that bottom bit, because we can say, well, that's exactly the same as writing the percent sign. So in which situation that becomes 50%. Whoop, whoop. What about 30 on 50? And I want to make that out of 100. Uh, how do we get from there to there? I double it. How do we get from there to there? I double it too. So that becomes 60 out of 100, which we can write as a shortcut, as 60 per sem. Now, what's important to know is the ratio. What we notice is, how do I get from the top to the bottom, or the bottom to the top? I times by two. And so even when we turn it into a percentage times by two, we are keeping the ratios of the top and the bottom the same. We're just turning it into a score out of 100. All right, so as I say here, 10 out of 20 is really a half. It is 50%. If I put that onto my calculator, actually what I get is a decimal number of 0 0.5. If I put 30 out of 50 onto my calculator, I get 0 0.6. And it is no coincidence then that that comes out as 50% and that comes out as 60%. Because what we're doing is we know that 10 is half of 20, and so we know that 50 is half of 100. See what we're doing there? And we know that 30 is 
or six tenths of that value there, and six tenths is the same as 60%. So how do we go from a decimal number to a percentage? Maybe you can already guess this, but it's coming up. So converting a fraction into a percentage, there are lots of ways of doing this, okay? So if I wanted to do 36 out of 90, and I wanted to turn that into out of 100, well, believe it or not, that's not necessarily a particularly easy thing to do, because how do you go from 90 to 100? Lots of people go add 10. No, you can't do that because you have to multiply or divide to be able to get there. And there's not a nice way to do this. But your calculator actually does the hard work for us. So when I do 36 divided by 90, I actually get 0 0.4. Now, 0 0.4 is the same as 4 on 10. But because I want that to be something out of 100, what do I do here? I times it by 10, which gives me 40 out of 100, or 40%. Now, this is the pencil and paper way of doing it. What you notice here, though, is there's a quicker way. If I have a decimal value and I times it by 100, I can get to my percentage value. And that's very much what I've done on my calculator here. I've done 36 divided by 90, and I've times it by 100. This there takes a decimal value and turns it into a percentage. And so this slide very much shows you that. Here, breaking it down, we got 36 out of 90, which gave me 0 0.4. So some sort of ratio of 0 0.4. So I want to know what that same ratio would be of the number 100, which is where I get the 40% of, right? So we're saying, well, if I mark it out of 100 and I want 40% of that 100 or 0 0.4 times that, there gives me my 40%. So I can break it up that way. What about converting from a decimal into percentage? Well, we've already done this, all right? So the great thing is a fraction is just a simple way. Well, let's, let's do that again. If I had uh, 43 out of 60, how would I turn that into a, a decimal? I just do 43 divided by 60. That little line there is a divide sign. So it even tells you 43 divided by 60. That will give me a decimal. And as soon as I've got my decimal value, as soon as I have my decimal, I multiply that by 100 and that will give me my percentage. So I've just basically put in a decimal value and the calculator has gone, all right, you've got a decimal value. And as soon as I multiply that by 100, I get 75. So 0 0.75 is the same as 75%. Now what we do forwards in mathematics, we also need to do backwards, which I've probably got the wrong way around now for my calculator, but anyway, uh, for the camera. But we need to be able to do this stuff backwards. And what I'm saying is, if we have 23%, what did I say the percent sign was? It's the same as having a denominator of 100 in a fraction. So that is exactly the same as 23 divided by 100, and ka -ching. I have just converted a percentage into a fraction. Now, that may not be in its lowest form, but my calculator can help me with that in just a moment. What about 135%? Well, that is now 135, and wherever I see the percent sign, I just do divide by 100. And again, ka -ching, there is my fraction. Now, in that situation, yes, you can cancel that down, but again, maybe I would leave my calculator to do that. So let's use my calculator. Couldn't express 62% as a common fraction. Well, I now know that 62% is the same as 62 divided by 100. There we go. I put 62 divided by 100 and uh-oh, my calculator gave me 0 0.62. Okay, okay, sorry. I know that I've got this fractions button, so I'll make it look like a fraction because if in my calculator I make it look like a fraction, surely it's going to give me a fraction back. So here we go. I made it look like a fraction and uh-uh. That's annoying because the question wants it as a fraction and my calculator is giving me as a decimal. Well, the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, that your calculator has a number of different modes. And previously, if I go back, I had my mode here as decimal. And so my calculator was giving me my answer as a decimal. Whereas if I change it to standard, and this is the Casio class pad, by the way, guys, if you're using the TI Inspire or any other calculator, just make sure you're in the right mode. I now notice that I get 62 on 100 becomes 31 over 50 and there we go that's 31 over 50 it's in its simplest form and the calculator's done the hard work for me express 72 percent as a decimal well there we go once again 72 percent 72 
on 100 because we know that 72% is the same as 72 divided by 100 and as a decimal gave me 0 0.72. Now again, remember, I had to make sure that my calculator was in the decimal mode. Zipping towards the end of this video, all right? Again, this should just be a recap, but again, print off the notes. Stick them in your summary book. Do what you need to do. Annotate them. There's no point just sticking them in if you don't annotate them. Write them in your words. Find the percentage of a quantity. Now, the word of, when I do maths, means times. Yes, so wherever I see the word of, I'm looking for the word times or multiply. So, as an example here, I'm trying to find 15% of 140 dollars. Now, the first thing to notice here is my units. My answer is gonna have to be in dollars. If you don't put the units, sadly, you're probably gonna lose marks. So let's break this down. Oh, hold on, I've got a percent sign. I now know that's 15 divided by 100 of, I've just told you as a times, 140. And lo and behold, I have a sum that I can put in my calculator and I can put it in exactly as it looks. 15 divided by 100 times 140 gives me an answer of 21. Now, as I say, it is $21. Why? Because I'm finding 15% of some sort of quantity. If it was kilometers or meters or miles or, or any other unit, then you have to make sure you give your unit. But writing the percent sign as divide by 100 and an off sign as times ka -ching, you found a percentage of any quality, uh, or any quantity in the word. Now, obviously, it's not all about test scores. We can use percentages to relate lots of different things. So, for example, there are 18 girls in a class of 25 students. What percentage of the class are girls? Well, in this situation, we've got 18 girls out of 25 people. So, there's 18 girls out of 25. Can I use my calculator for this? I could do, but again, I want a percentage. In this situation, I can do it by, one, uh, do it by hand because I know an easy way to go from 25 to 100. How? A times by four. And if I times the bottom by four, I times the top by four. So 18 times by four, 18, 36, 72 over 100, which I now know I can write as 72 per cent. All right, so again, we can use percentages. There are 72% of that class are girls. Awesome. What about this one? We can use percentages, yes. And what about this one? Well, we can use, uh, yeah, we've got 76 millimeters and 40 centimeters. Now, again, where's the trick here? The trick is we have millimeters and centimeters. They are different units. So now we have to go back and use our conversions. Oh, I did a video just recently, conversions. And I've got to make sure they're the same units. How do I go from centimeters to millimeters? A times by 10. So that's going to give me 400 millimeters. And in which case, I can now do 76 divided by 400. How am I going to get this to um, out of 100? Well, in this situation, I'm actually going to divide by 4. So 76 divided by 4. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Let's do that by hand. 76 divided by 4 goes in there once. Give me a remainder 36, it gives me 9, and so in which case that gives me 19. And so, ladies and gentlemen, my answer becomes 19%. Again, perfectly valid for you to use a calculator to be able to do this. And ladies and gentlemen, there we go. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much for taking the time in watching. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Greatly appreciated to my YouTube channel. Go over to mathsguru.com and sign up absolutely free. And you can download the notes for these videos and watch these videos in your own time. And they're all searchable and much easier to find them on YouTube. But I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very much for watching. Give us a shout out to your mates if you could. Let them know that my channel's here. And hopefully I'll see you in another video. Take care. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.